the main uh, compound is muscimol, but to describe like what the spirit is, it's Amanita is the thyme mushroom, that mysterious occult weird mushroom that's everywhere and nowhere at the same time. But soccer moms can take it all the way to psychonauts that want to like go deep and it can, it can provide benefits for, you know, everyone to meditate and think about past life trauma or childhood trauma. You can have those memories without the visceral response. You can end that cycle and like step onto a new timeline, right? Amanita is also like kind of the spiritual adaptogen. I think she kind of just meets you where you're at and fills in the gaps and helps you on your path to healing. We're here, Inner Child Circle. Inner Child Circle. We are the Inner Child Circle. Our mission is to support individuals healing through their own self-awareness. Me, Sierra. I'm Rachel. Hi, I'm Karen. Carrie out. So, so happy to be here. Michael Wilson. It's Michael Wilson. Hey, everybody. Sorry for the background, although it's, I think it's sweet. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been working with Amanita for basically oh, oh, about two years solid, like really dedicated almost every single day, like learning something new about Amanita. And I've been making uh, mushroom extractions and herbal preparations since 2016. Um, so that's kind of my background as well as like permaculture and um, farming and yoga and other spiritual practices. Yay. Thank you. So would you like to introduce Amanita to us, Michael? Oh man, that's that's a that's a daunting task because Amanita is just very uh, <laughs> all encompassing for so many different ways. But I think it's really important to like define what or not define, but to describe like what the spirit is uh, before we like get into like definitions and things. Um, earlier this year, I was doing a distillation course and the beginning of the course, we had a, a plant study or a plant walk and the instructor, you know, was like taking us to a tree and I knew right away what the tree was. And she was like, we're not going to name the tree. We're not going to define the tree. We're going to experience the tree. We're going to um, witness the tree. We're going to observe it. And we're going to see all the different patterns and everything, you know, the, the nuance and the structure of it. And then like, you know, hours later, then we're going to say what it is. And for my analytical mind, I was like, oh, this is silly. Like it's a hemlock tree, you know, but uh, <laughs> it taught me to slow down and it taught me to see things about the tree that I never even thought like saw before I never even took time to consider because all I would think about is you know what is this tree how is it native to where and what are the associated organisms that grow beside it or with it um, and I learned more subtleties and nuance and that can kind of go into like the doctrine of signatures like with Chinese medicine where you're like observing something in its natural habitat you're looking at its growth patterns um, you're, you're tasting it, you're experiencing it. Um, and then also like noticing the effects on the body. Um, so I think that example just kind of reminded me of when I started working with Amanita and how intuitively I just knew like I needed to slow down and I needed to like just dedicate time with this one mushroom and not really work with anything else and in fact i kind of eliminated other things out of my you know what, what i was taking so um you know what from what i've gathered and from what i've experienced um in a lot of ways amanita is the time mushroom um she kind of helps us reveal that time is an illusion um and that we can actually heal past timelines uh, from specifically, it seems around childhood trauma, uh, but also 
any trauma in the past um, because in you know going into the mechanisms of how Amanita muscaria works with people the main uh, compound is muscimol and muscimol is a GABA agonist uh, it suppresses the fight or flight response in the body so uh, whenever you're able to meditate and think about past life trauma or um, you know childhood trauma you you can have those memories without the visceral response from the body having that fight or flight reaction which actually perpetuates that trauma so it's almost like you can end that cycle and like step onto a new timeline right and i think that that's so amazing um and i think that that doesn't happen for everyone but i think that um <laughs> Amanita is also like kind of the spiritual adaptogen, like she meets you where you're at, you know, for me, whenever I first started working with her, it was um, immediately third eye opening um, to the point where I'd have like little twitches on my third eye whenever I'd be at a choice point and I'd be like this way or this way, it'd be like ding, 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 like it was like my little intu intuition sensor <laughs> and for my wife, it was uh, heart opening. And I just heard from a customer that it felt like it was activating her root chakra. Um, so I think she kind of just meets you where you're at and fills in the gaps and helps you on your path to healing. Um, and if you're working with her with respect and with patience um, and with um, understanding of the subtleties uh, because there's so many people coming into the Amanita sphere that are looking at it like it's another psychedelic trip and or it's, you know, like, what's this going to feel like or what's this going to do? And it's really like, I think Amanita is asking us to to really slow down and pay attention to our own bodies and the the natural rhythms and to to notice those subtleties and um i've found that it's been one of the most subtle but profound healing modalities for me and a lot of people would agree so i think in a nutshell that's the best i can do right now <laughs> wow i feel like you did what amanita does for people where you just like met us where we're at yeah, those are so many of our questions answered. We feel so special that we even found Aunt Amanita and you and information so concise. How do you feel about that, Karen? Well, I tell you what, I, I'm just so excited to hear this because it feels like I've been searching my whole life for something that does exactly this in such a, a gentle, precise manner because when you say it's like uh did you call it a spiritual adaptogen yeah yes yeah. yes the wisdom i just want to learn more and more and more about how we use it and what it can specifically do especially in the way of healing trauma yeah absolutely i think that something i found that's interesting with amanita is that people will find Amanita, but it's almost like Amanita finds them. And it's it's funny because like so many people will be like, I just had a dream about Amanita and like I've never looked at it before. Or, like, you know, I've seen it, but I've never like I wasn't just watching. It wasn't just in my subconscious, but like I saw that I had this dream about it. And then like I went on Instagram and like I saw your your post and then I found your website and then I bought a tincture and and now I'm doing this or like for me like uh, I mean if I can go on another tangent I mean just how I started working with Amanita was um, that I had a o over half of my life was um, dedicated to a unhealthy relationship with cannabis and so I was I was addicted to it mentally, you know, I mean, you can get addicted to anything. Um, it was just that 
that was my thing. And literally the day I knew I needed to quit, I uh, was at a party and, and my friend brought up, have you tried Amanita muscaria microdosing? And I was like, what? That's like that poisonous mushroom. Like you're crazy. Like, why would I, why would I microdose that? And I'd already been making mushroom tinctures at that point. So I was like, you know, I knew a little bit, but um, I didn't know <laughs> what I was getting into. And so the day that I knew I needed to quit cannabis, I somebody brought it up. And then over the period of the next two months, as I started to wean myself off of cannabis, uh, two other people brought it up and that they had taken larger amounts and that they were not just not dead, but perfectly fine. In fact, they had less anxiety uh, for like weeks just from one one single uh, large dose. And so I really started to do some research and I, I bought my first caps, I made tea, I drank the tea and I started to work with her and realized that I was able to find a lot of the things I was searching for with cannabis were fulfilled with Amanita. And like things like reducing anxiety, helping me with sleep, um, you know, decreasing depression, um, feeling comfortable and calm and just like in a flow state that like all these things were answered with Amanita. And I, I was able to give up my unhealthy relationship with cannabis that was causing me anxiety, paranoia, depression, you know, all these negative things. Now I don't, knock cannabis like if it works for you that's awesome it's amazing medicine and i wish that i could use it but it's just it doesn't work for me and that's fine but um it's just it's just one of those things where it's oftentimes people's introductions are led by synchronicities so it's uh <laughs> i think it's one of the most magical mushrooms <laughs> if not the most, but I mean, they're all magical. <laughs> so I love that. So if that's you, the invitation you needed, if you've been thinking about this mushroom, if it's been popping up in your life, um, that's your, all you need. That's your invite. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, cool. I'd say so. If you're listening to this podcast, you're probably like came mm -hmm. here for a reason, right? <laughs> that's right. Emanita saying hello. Right. Wow. Thank yeah, and I'm happy to be like uh, an ambassador. I know I'm going to get information wrong and I'm a human and I'm fallible, but uh, I think that the mushrooms <laughs> recruit ambassadors and diplomats from the fungal kingdom. And uh, I, I, I take it seriously. Like, I don't, I don't like to uh, put out misinformation. If, the, if I say something wrong and I find out, like, I will, I will correct myself, but I think one of the most important things for people to do when they're on this path of discovery is to find multiple sources of information. And um, there's a ton of studies out on Amanita. Um, they're just like a lot of older studies and uh, oftentimes in different languages or from other countries. But um, one of the best sources of information if you're on Facebook is the Amanita Muscaria Science and Magic page. Um, also, if you're on Reddit, you can go to just r slash Amanita Muscaria. And we have a great beginner's guide and uh, tons of studies um, because uh, it's just, it's really important to have, you know, with when you're working with a mushroom that when you eat it raw, it could be um, toxic. You know, you I, I've, had that experience, it's not my favorite. Um, there's small amount of people who, who like to eat the raw mushrooms, but they have a high amount of ibotenic acid in them. And uh, whenever you dehydrate them, and then whenever you do um, heat and pH change, you are um, decarboxylating that ibotenic acid into muscimol. And muscimol is the, the main therapeutic compound that people are looking for. So it's really important that you um, either know what you're doing or you're buying from a source that knows what they're talking about. Um, so, but, you know, what I've found is uh, for the most part, you know, it seems like Amanita will, will help you, you know, 
guide the way, but uh, it could be <laughs> could be an easier path if you if you use your own discernment too along that journey. Can you talk a little bit about how this works with our brain chemistry? Yeah. Um, so with muscomol, it's a GABA A uh, selective agonist, I believe. And um, other things that are GABA agonists are um, benzodiazepine or alcohol, um, mm -hmm. chamomile, lavender, um, kava is not a GABA agonist, mm -hmm. but it acts similarly, I think. Um, I might I might have that wrong, but I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure it's uh, it's similar in effects. So these are going to be, you know, just mm -hmm. I like to share with that um, share people, you know, those other uh, substances because mm -hmm. that will give people like a, a an idea of like what the genre of effects are, you know, because it's mm -hmm. kind of like dissociative delirium in like higher doses, um, but in small doses, it's mm -hmm. just relaxing and, you know, helps reduce anxiety, really helps with sleep. Like people that have chronic insomnia, mm -hmm. they're able to sleep like pretty well afterwards. Um, and it helps with dreams. Um, it helps people with PTSD um, and also uh, addictions, various addictions. So there's a mm -hmm. number of people who have, um, weaned themselves off of benzodiazepine mm -hmm. with using Amanita muscaria and also um, a smaller amount have weaned themselves off of alcohol. Now, because it's like a similar, uh, it's affecting the brain in a similar way, um, you can kind of start to taper down on your, your um, whatever you're trying to get off of and then tapering up with the Amanita. And um, there's a lot of people who have done it successfully. Um, and there's no addictive, you know, qualities to Amanita. There's, there's very little side effects too. Like in the majority of people, most people can take it. Um, and also <clears throat> with opiates, um, uh, opiates are affecting a different part of the brain, but, uh, you know, we find that similar with like psilocybin microdosing, um, the, you know, the, they may have a different effect on the brain, but they may achieve a similar result. Um, so with psilocybin being like serotonergic, um, you know, you, you can um, promote a positive mood that could help you get off of things like opiates that are like dopamine, dopaminergic, you know? Um, so it's similar effects with Amanita. Uh, so it's pretty interesting. There's there's quite a bit of overlap between the microdosing of Amanita and psilocybin. Uh, but for me personally, I, I prefer Amanita. Um, I think my serotonin receptors are just fine. Um, I don't think I really need that microdose because, you know, whenever you're in those, those serotonin levels, it's like, you know, there's depression and then there's like neutral, like I'm feeling good. And then there's like happy, excited. And then if you go beyond that, you, you get into anxiety zone because um, it's like too much excitability. Um, so, you know, just in my like understanding, it seems that people are that are prone to anxiety, that psilocybin doesn't work for them, that Amanita is a good uh, solution for that. Amazing. So, so did I get it right that Amanita doesn't raise serotonin levels like crazy? No, and like it's 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 a GABA agonist. It's not serotonergic, um, but I have heard that muscomol might inadvertently raise serotonin. Um, probably just not as like directly or not as much as something like psilocybin. That's a big relief for me because I do get after psilocybin like the crash. Right, and that's. Um, something that you know you might want to look into something like 5-HTP but you know mm -hmm. some people like I've taken 5-HTP doesn't really work well with me I, I think my serotonin levels are fine <laughs> um, I don't think I need any modulating there I think it's just like causing you know a little too much and then also afterwards too like I'll have like the the, the come down 
a little bit. So, but with Amanita, I don't, you don't really experience a come down. It has these cumulative effects where like, if you're, if you take like threshold doses or, you know, large doses or, you know, micro doses consistently that people seem to have a prolonged sense of, um, you know, no anxiety uh, and like that, that calm flow state. And then maybe you'll notice after a couple of weeks of abstinence that like, oh yeah, I, I have a little anxiety. Like it'd be nice to take some Amanita again and you can start right up. <laughs> it's, um, it's pretty amazing. That's why I've basically chosen to uh, dedicate a lot of my, my, my life and my focus to it. Wow. Do you mind if I ask what it's like, what the experience feels like? Sure. Yeah. Um, do you want me to go from like microdose to threshold to hero dose? I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So like the microdose is subtle, you know, it's a microdose. You're not really supposed to like, you know, feel it, but it's going to modulate your brain chemistry and modulate your mood. Um, and it's just kind of like, I, I was diagnosed with ADD and I know it definitely helps with my ADD. Like I can just go from like frantic to like, like fishbowl brain to like, okay, we're going to work on this one thing and that's going to be it. And like all the other white noise in my head, it's just like gone. And I can really put on the blinders and it's, it's very helpful for that. Um, it's not everybody's experience, but I think in general, most people experience like calm flow state um and then if you take it before bed it's almost like you're just like putting on this blanket of like just like warm creamy feelings that you just drift off into sleep and you sleep so well with it like you'll wake up feeling like you just had the best sleep ever and um like my wife has had insomnia her entire life um like waking up, you know, 10 times a night, you know, or more. And she's able to sleep like six, seven, eight hours with no interruption. And um, so that's huge. And like a lot of people experience that too. Um, so another, you know, thing about it basically being adaptogenic is if you take it during the day and you're feeling energized, then it doesn't make you sleepy. Now, if you took like a large amount, that would probably, you know, like a threshold dose or a hero dose, that would nine times out of 10 make you fall asleep. But um, mo for the most part, it kind of just will help modulate what you need. So if you're it's before bed and you're tired, then it's going to help you sleep. But if it's during the day and you're full of anxiety, it's going to help you calm down and like channel that energy. So, and then with a threshold dose, um, that seems to be somewhere between two to 15 grams. And I know that's in a very wide range. Um, an important thing to note about this mushroom is that uh, they can vary in potency tenfold. One mushroom growing beside another one could be 10 times stronger or, or weaker in muscimol. So whenever you're making preparations, it's important to homogenize your dose. So you have this you know, you take all your mushrooms and you grind them up and you get this, you know, equal, you know, average dose. And then, you know, making a tea is another step to homogenize that. So um, the threshold doses, they can be just kind of like feeling um, like very uninhibited, uh, very open, kind of like cacao, um, which ironically, they're both uh, neuroprotectants. So they're going to protect the myelin sheath, cacao and amanita. Um, and then you can get into like, yeah, more like a body high, more like, um, get into a trance where like, you know, like I, you know, I took a bath and I felt like it was 10 minutes and like an hour passed by. And I was just like totally blissful, like in a peaceful dreamy state. Um, and a lot of the same effects as microdosing. Now, whenever you get into like macro dosing and hero dosing, 
like I don't I don't advise anyone do this because it can be a very very intense and dangerous situation, and that's why I really um, tell people about the microdosing um, and the benefits from that because like hero dosing, you you know if you're getting to like 15 to 20 to like up up to like 60 grams, um, you can start to have um, like you know, you can have really profound experiences that like you come out of it and you're like, wow, like I'm grateful for life, but like, I don't think I want to do that again. <laughs> um, a lot of people have really intense experiences and, you know, you can, you can have, um, like mental looping time looping where, uh, you know, you're basically revisiting the end of the universe over and over again, or you're like in your mind living out billions of lifetimes um you can also revisit like you can go back to the beginning of time or the beginning of your life and like see all the different scenarios of different timelines um which is very interesting but you know it's it's also accompanied by um potentially blacking out so like you could lose consciousness and then come back and you kind of like would snap in and out um so it's kind of like it's almost like being drunk but you're also tripping it's, it's a very intense experience and it's not for fun. Like people will ask me like, Hey, how much to trip? And I'm like, you don't want this. Like, if you want to have a fun time, like take some acid or mushrooms, like psilocybin, <laughs> like this is for like shamanic work. Like this is, you have to have a sitter with you. You should be microdosing for like six months minimum. Um, like you need to develop a strong relationship with Amiga or she's going to kick your ass. And cause she's like the ego destroyer. Like she does not take any crap. She's really, really nice, you know, sweet, um, mother. <laughs> but like, if you're trying to get something out of her that she doesn't want to give you, like she'll give you what you need. <laughs> and that may not feel good always. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think, I think like the, the threshold doses are, are fine um they're really pleasant and i think that for like group ceremony that would probably be better um i think the hero journey is it's like it's really intense and i think it should be probably like one-on-one -on -one with like you know a guide or a sitter who specifically works with amanita because like the effects that some people can have from losing consciousness and having time loops and mental loops and um like like fractal framing where like it's like you know picture 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 you know and uh really really intense um <laughs> you kind of just have to like completely surrender like give everything up and like just let it happen um so not everybody's ready for that and that's why i subscribe to the microdose because basically anyone can take it um it's it has built-in integration like you you take it and things come up and you're working through it and if you're journaling or meditating it's even better um and uh you know you don't have to prepare mm -hmm. for it ahead of time or you know integrate it afterwards it's, it's just like it's built in mm -hmm. um and i think it has more probably more long-term positive effects um mm -hmm. so yeah wow Thank you. That was really, really helpful. Um, one question from Curiel is, what's your favorite use and what's the most common use? My favorite use um, is probably taking uh, like 125 milligrams to 250 milligrams um, in the, the tincture. And um, I think the most common use actually seems to be um, I don't know, it's kind of a toss up. Like, I think most people just for ease of use, they're like eating the dry caps. Um, but I don't think that's as effective um, as making a tea uh, because it's more bioavailable as a tea. And also um, people may not have as much stomach issues. Um, also with the tea, it's gonna be at least partially more decarboxylated. Uh, that seems to be up to personal preference for people if it's like decarbed or not. You know, some people like a little bit of ibotenic acid because it kind of 
can give you this like pick me up energy. Um, and muscimol is like the yin side of that, which is like deep restorative, like trauma healing. So you really have this like yin and yang mushroom where it's like, depends on how you eat it, you know, um, how it's prepared. Um, you could have com two completely different experiences with the exact same mushroom. Um, so I think, I think most people are probably taking, you know, like for a microdose, like somewhere between 500 milligrams or like two grams and just munching it, um, or taking something like, like 250 milligrams. Um, a lot of my customers that I think that maybe it's just the way I prepare it, or maybe they're, you know, just tuned in to the subtler energies, but I, I have people that have profound experiences on like 50 milligrams. Like I had, I had a customer quit benzodiazepine in six weeks on like 50 milligrams a day. So I don't know. <laughs> I think, um, I think it's really like, I, I think it's really wise to start small and then just like work up to where it works for you because you could be taking too much and it's like not necessary. Um, plus I, I think it's really important to like, you know, if you're like doing this like spiritual path or introspective path to like really like tune in and like focus your, your, your attention to see like what you actually need um, instead of bombarding yourself with just, you know, overstimulation. Yeah, thank you for answering that question. And I do love how you bring up the other aspects that more gentler, like the journaling and how your mushroom works so well with these things that are, we can just so easily access. It's like such a great pairing, it sounds like to me. So thank yeah. you for adding that element. Yeah, totally. I, I mean, I sell tinctures all day, but I also like I came into this from healing and if it was something else, I would be, you know, supporting that. And like, it's just the Amanita has worked for me. And like, mm -hmm. I know it's not the only healing modality, but if you just, and if you just take something and you don't do anything else in your life, like, what are you doing? You know, you have to integrate, you have to reflect, you have to, um, you know, it's really important to have that, that, that um, inner work. So it almost just potentiates that even more. Like if you're journaling or meditating with this, like, yeah, it's, it's going to make it so much more effective. Wow. Thanks for that. Um, yeah. Akashic reading. So, I mean, I think it would probably, I don't, I've only done like one Akashic reading. I don't know a whole lot about that, but I think it would probably help um, because it kind of just like opens the veil a little bit and like lets the, lets the, the guard down, um, which could probably make that, you know, Akashic reading more accessible. And also, yeah, you know, with, with, from my experience, opening my third eye, um, it really helped me to, to see things clearly in a time whenever I was like, my vision was all cloudy because I was just smoking weed all the time. <laughs> and you, you've mentioned that a, a couple of times, the transition between, uh, from weed, which is something that a lot of people are very familiar with. And, mm -hmm. um, in, in my circles, anyway, the, the idea of maybe pulling back or being more responsible or perhaps just more intentional with the use. So going, you know, the, 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 the body feel and the mind feel of smoking weed and transitioning that to Amanita, what, what, what did that look like? How did that feel? Oh, it was really hard. It was honestly one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. <laughs> like I never thought that I would be I'm almost two years completely like sober from cannabis and um, you know, I've had like CBD here and there, but it doesn't, I don't like the way it makes me feel anymore. Um, it makes me feel a little spaced out and like, I don't feel like myself, like I don't feel confident in who I am. And Amanita does this thing where it's like helping you 
relax, but you still have your like agency and it's different for everybody. Like there's a lot of people who use Canvas and Almanita together and they love it. Like they think they work together so well. Um, there's, uh, you know, some people, very few people who think that they cancel each other out. It doesn't really make sense. I think it's just the amount that you're taking maybe because Canvas has these like overwhelming effects. Like you're like, you know, I'm so high. Like I took, you know, a hit from some really strong weed and I am so high, you know, and it's like, if you, if you're working with this like subtler medicine, it's just going to mask the effects. Um, so I just wanted to say that, that like, you know, it's different for everybody, but um, my transition was like going from smoking weed multiple times a day to only smoking at night. And then after a couple of weeks, I only smoked um, a couple times a week. And then it was like only on weekends. And I was also like smoking uh, CBD cannabis or like the, the hemp. And it was some crazy crap from California. I swear it had THC in it because I got high from it. <laughs> but um, I gave that up because I just, I, I kept, I would smoke it. And I was like, I don't like how I feel. Like I, I really, like my body is rejecting this. And like, I need to listen to that. And I feel so much more like myself without it. Uh, like I have um just got this monkey off my back and i want to keep that momentum going so um yeah and then eventually i just i remember i the last time i smoked was on my birthday and i just remember being like like i really don't like this like this is it like i'm done and yeah i get cravings still like you know uh, when i'm at a party and i smell it i'm like that's nice you know but i just you know pass the joint to somebody else <laughs> and like it, it, it doesn't really phase me a whole lot and uh, I'm grateful for that. And I think it's really because I am content and with my, my brain chemistry and my body chemistry, you know, one thing that goes with cannabis consumption is like, you're always trying to regulate your, your state of highness. Like, am I too high to drive? Am I, you know, not high enough to enjoy this thing? Like, I mean, not everyone's like that. Like some people will just smoke, you know, one or two hits a day and they're good. Um, but for me, it was like, it was, I was chasing a high and that's never really sustainable because you're always going to come down. Um, so it's really more about like finding a neutral plane and like, even with Amanita, like I, a lot of days I could take it or leave it because I don't want to be dependent on something entirely, but I'm trying to find the things that can help me that um, don't have as much of an impact on my homeostasis. Like if I'm coming down from Amanita, I don't really know because there's not a whole lot uh, going on there. It's just, you know, it's just it's a slow taper down. Um, you know, whereas cannabis, it was like, I would want to smoke every hour or two hours. Cause you know, you, you can only be that high for so long. So that was my experience. You know, it was, it was like three months of just slowly, gradually tapering off. Um, but that was after you know, 15 years of chronic use. So I needed to give myself a little bit of time. Uh, I was also supplementing with um, L-tyrosine. L-tyrosine is really helpful for people who are quitting addictions. Um, it's uh, just a liposomal form of tyrosine, which is found in um, meat and fish and eggs. Um, actually, if you've ever seen uh, really aged cheese, uh, those little crystals that are in it, that's actually tyrosine. Um, so tyrosine is an amino acid um, and it helps your body produce dopamine. So whenever we have addictions or fixations or habits on things like our brain is more than likely seeking dopamine. So if you can help your body produce that, then you don't, you don't have those cravings as much. Um, so L-tyrosine was great. I still take it every day because I have an addictive personality. <laughs> so um, it just helps me in general. It has a lot of, a lot of other uh, benefits too. So, yeah. yeah. I just want to reiterate how wonderful your words are. 
it feels like I'm listening to poetry and something really beautiful stories. And I can tell why Amanita made you an ambassador for it. It's just so enjoyable. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it's like really, it's coming from a heart that has been, you know, healed through, like through Amanita. And I mean, I'm not like, you know, I don't, I don't like to like define myself as this or that or one thing, but you know, it's, I definitely feel like, um, Amanita was like, Hey, you're, you're going to, you're going to get a lot out of this and you're going to help a lot of people through this. So just, you know, jump on the train. <laughs> I was like, all right. Like, <laughs> like I was a yoga teacher. I don't want to be like a Hindu. I, I you know, I was a, a meditator. I don't want to be a Buddhist or like, mm. you know, I like w witchcraft, but I'm not like Wiccan. I, I take, you know, things from every path and, and they, help, if they help me with my life and forming my reality, then I work with them. I don't, I don't believe in labels, but, um, definitely, uh, I work with Amanita a lot and, uh, she's been really good to me. <laughs> so oh. I want to be I good to her. <laughs> Yay. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I have like my, my big heart around with the Amanita. <laughs> and that ties in so well with our mission is to support individuals healing through their own self-awareness. And it feels like Amanita creates that, like it's your own self-awareness. It gives you, if you want to work on your root, if you want to work on your third eye, if you have pain, if you have addiction, it feels like Amanita works with you is what I'm understanding from this. Yeah, absolutely. And that's another thing I didn't really mention was the inflammation. So um, people who take it, uh, orally will notice like there's systemic inf uh, reduction in inflammation um, but you can also make um, a tincture or an oil infusion and you can apply it topically to an area of pain if you have um, like sciatic pain you could apply it to your spine um, or if you had muscle inflammation you can apply it to your muscles or, or joint pain um, so it helps with that um, I think it does help with some skin conditions. I'm not familiar, like maybe psoriasis or something, but, um, but yeah, I'm just remembering what, like what Karen was saying with um, like how, like all you have this focus on, you know, like the inner child healing and um, like whenever um, you reached out to me and you told me your name was like the inner child circle, I was like, well, that's just perfect. I mean, literally it's like, Amanita is like focusing on these things that, you know, some people have said like other psychedelics, they work on different things. And like Amanita kind of like gets to the stuff that like they, other things can't touch, you know, like pre, um, like pre memory, like when memory was being formed, like, you know, six years old and younger where you're, you're like, not really conscious you're like loading the program of life um all that like everything you absorb is you're just a sponge and you know if you're in, if you're absorbing things that are traumatic or like you know that that create this um like deficit in your life that you're always like seeking out like something unhealthy like amanita will help address that um and i think it's really potentiated by meditation and only um, so I think it's, I think it's just awesome that, you know, the, the inner child circles, you know, curious about Amanita because she, Amanita is really making like a new wave in the culture. Um, she has been around for thousands of years or more, like way, way, you know, before, um, you know, recorded history and, uh, Amanita is literally grow on like every continent <laughs> like it, like um the the psychoactive ones and um there's a lot of different traditions that have used amanita there's a lot of mythology and lore behind it and uh it's just like nowadays she's coming out in like the western culture 
And I think it's at a time where we, we need it more than ever because we are like, you know, locked in with like this COVID stuff going on and like, you know, politics and like whatever, just all the crap, you know? And it, it's like, just turn off the news and like <laughs> tune into yourself, like, like start to work on your energy, like healing yourself and then like start helping your family and your friends. And like, that's all we can do. Um, and, you know, I think Amanita can help with that. Wow. Yeah. Thank you for accepting her invite. <laughs> yeah. So Rachel just said, I love trip sitting for others. How can I learn to facilitate healing for others? Um, yeah, I would say just start working with Amanita. And uh, if you're, you know, if you're, familiar with trip sitting then you're going to be in a better position to to do so um but and i think you know a lot of a lot of it has to do with like intuition um and like understanding where people are at and what they need um or don't need and um i think uh you know whenever i was guided to do ceremony with amanita with others I was in the middle of my own ceremony and I was like, I want to, I want to offer this to people. What would that look like? And I had this idea in my head, like it just came up, you know, instantly it was intuition. And I was like, okay, well that would, that would sound good to me, but is that the right way to do it? And I started asking experts and, you know, different people who do ceremony and they're like, yeah, it's, it's, you know, like this. And I was like, oh, that's exactly what, I felt like it would be. And um, so I think it's really a matter of working with Amanita and then working with your intuition. And then whenever the time is ready, it'll just happen. And also having that experience and like understanding facilitation, it just adds to, you know, like easing yourself and easing other people. Um, but if you if you already have experience, then yeah, you should be should be well on your way then. <clears throat> and then on the other end of that spectrum, we talked about some of the first steps for those who are curious and learning more, curious and taking it. One would be the Facebook group Amanita Science and Magic or Reddit slash Amanita. Um, mm -hmm. I, my first step was to go to the website and your website and order a tincture. Yeah, it was beyond nice. And now that we're reviewing some of the effects, I'm realizing that, yeah, I was not nearly as worried about time yesterday as I typically am because I did an event last night and I was like, chill. Also, I had a really profound experience yesterday that I'm like, wow, that absolutely had to, was assisted by Amanita, a profound healing experience with my throat chakra. <laughs> and I was like half uh, a milliliter. Those are some of my introductions, but maybe you have more to that answer. Some first steps for those who are curious and learning more. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, if you're on Facebook, Amanita Mascaria, Science and Magic, uh, we have the biggest uh, Amanita group in the world online. Uh, we have at this point almost 50,000 members. Um, we have experts in there like Kevin Feeney, um, uh, who, who is another good resource. If you like to read, you need to get the Omnita Bible, which is the, the Flag Eric Compendium uh, by Kevin Feeney. It's, uh, it's, a very, uh, it's a very dense book and full of a ton of information, like going from, you know, chemistry to um, geography like where they're found what which ones are found where to mythology to the you know the santa claus myth the soma theories um uh the berserker mushrooms uh to culture where you know it's been um kind of peppered throughout different child stories like uh hansel and gretel and uh alice in wonderland obviously super mario um and to, to preparation and then also like anecdotal experiences, like what people's effects are. Um, another really good book that I just bought 
is um, this book by Baba Masha. It's just called Microdosing Amanita Muscaria. Um, I just started reading it, so like I don't know how you know credible it is, but I think that from what I've read, it seems pretty good. Um, yeah, I think those, uh, and then the Reddit group, Amanita Muscaria, I think those are, like, if somebody were to just join those two groups and, like, get those two books, they would have so much information. Um, there's other people with, like, YouTube channels, uh, and, you know, you can check those out, but just, you know, if you're, if you're at least confirming information with, like, three sources, then I think that you're probably good. Um, I would not go off of what I'm saying alone or like what one person is saying alone. Like I try to get my information right, but I'm a human, I'm, I'm fallible. And um, I wouldn't want somebody to just rely on me because then that is them not using their reasoning skills. So you really need to be informed with this. And it's something that I've noticed is like, people are so curious about it. Like usually whenever things sell well, it's like they're just easy and like somebody takes them. But, you know, whenever things are complicated, it's, it usually doesn't sell that well. But with Amanita, it's like really complicated and it sells really well. And I think it's really encouraging people to use their brain, but also like tap into their heart. Um, so it's kind of a <laughs> it's kind of an interesting thing. Wow. I feel so liberated. Really grateful. I'm happy to uh, to be here talking with you guys. It's been a lot of fun. It has been a lot of fun. Uh, Rachel, do you have any closing remarks? Um, I feel a lot of synergy right now. I'm I'm really happy that uh, we met and got to talk and find the uh, compatible vibrations between uh your work and our work with inner child circle and i hope we can keep on learning exploring pushing boundaries letting people liberating people from fear <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah okay thank you i'm gonna say for uh karen also her appointment came so she had to hop off um but she said she loves this and she loves all of the conversation um, and all of you. So that's her goodbye. And um, thank you. I learned so much uh, adds to all the research I have done and it has given me confidence uh, to try microdosing because I mean, I have children, so I don't do any psychedelic drugs I, or mushrooms or and I don't, I just keep my life very, very clean and very, very, I'm out of a responsibility that I have daily. <laughs> so um, on a personal level, after hearing so many stories, I feel comfortable that I could microdose knowing that yeah. it's a legal thing to do. And I hope that empowers other people to know like, um, this is accessible. This might be attainable for a lot, very, for, for a larger audience. So thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I just want to like um, give a disclaimer too that like, so this is, this mushroom is legal in every state except for Louisiana. Um, but in Louisiana, you can use it for decorative purposes. So, uh, and, and it is illegal in some countries like Australia, it's a schedule nine drug. Um, there's other countries too. But the, the thing is that um, Amanita is not allowed to be sold for human consumption. So this entire podcast was totally hypothetical, you know, and, you know, it's not, I'm not recommending it for consumption because according to the FDA, it's poisonous, but it's really because of um, what, you know, if you ate it raw. Um, now there is a, there is a company that has produced a tincture um, that uh, is not FDA approved, but they have like generally recognized as safe, you know, dossier on it. Um, but, you know, it's, it's like, uh, it, it seems to be very expensive and very weak. 
Um, I haven't tried it, but like just based off of like the price and the amount that's in the bottle, it just, it just doesn't seem realistic, but um, so, but you know, it's, it's like Amanita falls into this category where it's not a psychedelic, it's not illegal, but it's still this gray area. And it's just, it's just par for the course for Amanita because it's just that mysterious occult weird mushroom that's everywhere and nowhere at the same time. And uh, so just, I just wanted to say that, you know, soccer moms can take it, uh, you know, um, all the way to people who are like real psychonauts that want to like go deep. Um, and it can, it can provide benefits for, you know, everyone um, for the most part, like the amount of people that have negative side effects is extremely low in my experience, like extremely low. So I'm, I'm glad that you feel safer with, with that. And um, yeah, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much. I feel complete. Feel complete. Go team. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Right. Bye.